Bless. So this is Father Mikhail, and uh, I have a bit of a, a reflection today. And this this was a suggestion that came by way of my matushka. So thank you to my wife Anna for uh, the idea for this video. So before we begin the video, uh, I'd like to remind everyone just to please like, share, and subscribe to help spread the channel, to help spread the work that we're doing here. If you do feel like supporting us uh, with a with a monthly donation, we do have a Patreon. Uh, I am running a bi-weekly uh, Q&A and we'll be doing once a month uh, catechismal class online uh, in my Discord server for Patreon members. So, on to our topic for today, and that is our Sunday best. How do we go to church? As a priest serving in the Russian Orthodox Church, uh, outside of Russia, Rokor, uh, a lot of the time I'll observe young men showing up to church, especially young uh, Russian men, wearing their sneakers, you know, their sweatpants, their track suits, and this isn't acceptable. Now, well, no, why isn't this acceptable? This is this is the temple. This is the house of the King of the Universe. Many of these people, if they were getting a visit from their local authority, their president, their prime minister or uh, you know some other event they even going to their own say their high school semi formal dance or their prom would never go dress like this and liturgy is a far more solemn far more beautiful supremely more important event than any of those trivialities there it, it is a far more important event than something as trivial as a prom or a semi-formal or a visit from a dignitary. And yet many of these people will put on their best for that. You know, in, in more Ukrainian communities, they'll wear the Vishivanka, but then they'll, they'll show up, you know, to Rokor churches or wherever they're going, wearing their, you know, their, their sweatpants, their joggers, their, their Jordans, their oversized t-shirts, their brands. This is just not acceptable. You know, what? why would we cover ourselves like this in a way that shows no respect for the environment we're in. You know, ideally men, you should be wearing a long sleeve, button up shirt, pants and shoes. You don't have to wear a suit. I mean, if you can, definitely you should, but you don't have to. The whole idea is to look professional, to look like you care about where you are, to show that respect for your environment and this also communicates to others, especially inquirers who might be showing up at your parish, that this is important, that this is important to you and you understand its importance. And parents, encourage your kids to understand this importance. You know, don't be lazy yourselves when it comes to this, dads. Now on the inverse, I do have a message for the ladies. A lot of the time as a priest, I've had to caution women against wearing heavy amounts of makeup and lipstick. Now there's other reasons why this is a bad idea, but one of the primary reasons why you should never wear lipstick to church is because of the communing at the chalice. And in the Russian tradition, we kiss the base of the chalice after receiving communion. Why? Because even a lady can touch the holy things having received Christ himself. And so we have to also bear in mind that this can get stuck in the grooves on some of the chalices based on their designs. There's a very practical reason why it's difficult to clean that. But there's another reason. Yes, we should try to present ourselves in a good professional manner when we come to church. But I know many families who run late coming to the parish, who show up well after the gospel, and sometimes only come for communion. And I'm not saying every family that runs late runs late for this reason. Don't get me wrong. I know having kids can be a huge factor. There can be so many other factors. But just speaking from experience and what I've even heard people tell me from time to time, oh, Father, you know, uh, can we start later? You know, it takes me a while to get my hair and makeup. If we started later, you would come later. The problem is, is that your hair and makeup is more important than being at church on time. You know, why is this a problem? Well, I'll tell you. When you're showing up to church, who are you dressing like this for? 
I've seen women show up with clothing they shouldn't wear to church. And luckily in my parish, we're really good with correcting that. Um, you know, thanks to, to the wonderful rector that I work with, he, he's right on top of these things. If there's too much light showing, we have extra skirts. We have spare veils. But why is this so important, you might ask? Why does it matter if I show up with my face covered in makeup? You're meeting with your creator. I'll tell you right now, God doesn't give two wits if you wear your makeup. If anything, as an icon, as someone made in the image and likeness of God, and as a woman who also in a way is like an icon of the mother of God, you know, who should be your archetype that you model yourself after. This is a form of immodesty. You're covering the image that God has made and saying that it's not good enough. I must improve upon this image. I have to hide this image. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with wearing makeup. You know, it's been a part of our societies for a long time. And there's nothing wrong. What I'm against is the immoderate use of it. When women show up with their faces caked in foundation, lipstick, heavy amounts of eyeliner. I mean, uh, my wife told me that a lot of the makeup t uh, techniques that a lot of women use these days were actually uh, invented by drag queens. Why? Because these are men trying to look more effeminate. But then when you get women hiding behind layers and layers and layers of makeup and all the, the foundation and whatever else they cake on their faces, who are you really doing it for? You know, I would see women at certain parishes, not my own, you know, too busy fluffing their hair. They, they don't wear the veil and they're, they're constantly fluffing their hair. Why are you fixing your hair? God doesn't care. What he cares is that you're paying attention, that you're worshiping, that you're engaging with him, seeking to connect with him, repenting. But, but when we're carrying on like this, and, and man, I'm coming back to you too. It's vanity. Now on the inverse, I've seen men who are really fit or doing well, they'll come in ridiculously expensive suits or they're wearing really tight, super short sleeve shirts, trying to show off the guns. Again, who are you showing up for when you do that? Are you really showing up to worship Christ? Or are you trying to bring out the gun show and showing off to you know, the women at the parish? Because if that's why you're doing that, don't come. Get yourself right. Go home. Wear something modest. Show respect for the environment you're in. The only person whose opinion you should care about in that building is the one who you're coming hopefully to receive from the chalice. His opinion, his judgment is the only thing that matters. It is a grave temptation for us in the kind of society we live in with the Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, to constantly feel like eyes are on us and that we have to be dressed a certain way or wearing makeup to ridiculous extents or having to get things done to make ourselves more appealing. This is a deception, you know, and if you have kids who are struggling with this, please show them this video. God made you in his image and likeness. He didn't make something ugly. And when you show up to church like this, or, and I will even argue, when you are behaving like this and constantly feeling like you have to hide behind a mask, whether it's makeup, whether it's a fancy watch, a nice car, a fancy shirt, whatever, you're veiling that icon. You know, who would want to go into an Orthodox church and see all the icons covered? These beautiful works that remind us of the beauty of God's hand, of his grace, how he has grace transformed the lives of these saints and made them holy. And in that way, each icon is an icon of an icon of Christ. It, 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 it's so layered, so beautiful. And you yourselves are all icons. So don't cover yourselves with things. Don't put on pointless adornments. Don't carry yourself in a way that is proud and vainglorious. Come to church with humility. Let yourself be stripped down to a more Spartan level, as they would say. And come to worship God. Remove the distractions 
from yourself and for others. Don't be showy. Be humble. Remember that Jesus Christ is the creator of the universe. He's the Logos. He is the one who made it all. Everything was made by him and for him. The Father has given him all things. And yet he rides into Jerusalem on a donkey. He lived for the first 30 years of his life as a humble carpenter. Look at us. Can we say the same? Can we really say the same for us? Are we modeling his virtue, his, hum his humility? Because if we're not doing that, even attempting to do that with the little things, how are we going to get it right with the big things? So, dear ones, please keep that in mind. Read the lives of saints. Emulate their behavior. Find little things here and there to give up, to help you increase in humility. God be with you all, and thank you for watching.